Affirmative Murder is brought to you by Unknown Nine Awakening. Is deja vu more than just a quirk of the brain? Is there always a rational explanation for the paranormal? Should one believe reports of unexplained phenomena? If you've asked yourself these questions before, follow in the footsteps of paranormal podcaster Blake Elrich and delve into the mysteries of the Unknown Nine universe. Unknown Nine Awakening is the action-adventure video game at the heart of the Unknown Nine narrative universe. You play as Haruna, an audacious heroine with the ability to venture into the fold, a mysterious dimension that overlaps our own. On her quest for powerful hidden knowledge, Haruna, who is portrayed by Anya Chalatra, will learn to master her unique connection to the fold, which allows her to channel its powers into our world. But such power does not go unnoticed. She quickly becomes the target of the Ascendants, a splinter faction of a secret society known as the Leap Gear Society, who want to use the fold to alter the course of human history. Their confrontation will take them across the world, from the sands of Mauritania and perilous Indian jungles to the gothic landscapes of Portugal. Get ready to dive into a mysterious parallel dimension. Unknown Nine Awakening releases on October 18th, 2024 for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Pre-order your copy today and learn more about the Unknown Nine universe at unknown9.com slash AMP. A M is in Man, this game is crazy. P. My copy's already pre-ordered. How about you? All right, back to the show. Yeah, obvious. We got a problem here. And it's more than just Alvin Stream and Punisher. When life begins to suck, who's reporting it? Luckily, you got your friends who you won't forget. Coming live, Alvin and friend on survival. Laughing non-stop, case drops on a cycle. Thought has been intrusive, thoughts off an iPhone. How do you make the world seem bright with the lights off? AFs, it might as well stay up. Lies being told like that dinosaur BS. Magnifying glass to the ground if they don't see us. Having the time, roasting your favorite pizza. Bougie ain't an option, it's the way. Take it to the grave, have moving to the place. You already know when they take the case. Laugh the pain away, it's affirmative murder. Hello and welcome to another episode of Affirmative Murder, the equal opportunity true crime comedy podcast. I am Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans. Oh, yeah. What up? Fran, what is going on, my compadre? Hey, man, nothing. No, ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. <laughs> oh, my bad. I didn't mean to play that. Uh, everything's good, man. I'm just... You're gonna, your boy out? You're gonna air your boy out like that on I'm such ch- a monumental <laughs> and impactful episode. That hey, I'm chilling. I'm, hey, I'm sorry, man. Hey, look. You gonna do that to the King LeBron James, the GOAT I, James, Akron, no Ohio? Like a Diddy party. Everybody knows. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I'm just, I'm saying, bro. I, I'm sorry, bro. I had to. <laughs> Let's not jump the shark because <laughs> right. we got a lot to get into. Yeah. This is the life and crimes of Diddy. Uh, I think this will be at least a two part episode. We got a lot to get into. It has been an, um, a, a crazy year. Yeah, we've been. It's been. It's, we've been diddied out for a year. Like uh, it's been a lot. But Diddy is. He's locked. He's locked up, y'all. And there's a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, and we're gonna go through the history of Diddy. And um, one thing I want to say, friend, there's some. There's some stuff we don't. You know, we we can slow walk into this because you know, I don't want to just dive right in. Um, no Diddy. But um, uh, it is important to contextualize the story that we're going to get into. I think it is, and I'd love your thoughts on this. We've heard so many stories of, you know, sexual deviancy and depravity and everything in Hollywood. And only in a case like this does it expose things so far. I, I can't think of any other ones on top of my head. Because Diddy is accused of uh, homosexual acts, it almost gives people carte blanche to deny, make fun of, and uh, not take as seriously to me. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to uh, homophobia in the black community. I think that it's, this, is, this is so outlandish that it's almost funny to people. And there are things to laugh about, and I'm not going to lie. The, the memes yeah. are crazy and everything okay. like that. But like, what he's being accused of is really dark stuff, and people are really hung up on the freak-offs aspect of it. But there's a lot of dark, dark stuff being alleged here. And because it's like, oh, was he having sex with boys? It's like that's that's circumve- circumventing a lot of dark stuff that I've had in my mind connected dots to over the years. And mm. now finally it's like I have a reason to speak about it on this platform because now it's criminal. 
Yeah. Before this was this was all, see the thing is this was all Illuminati talk a decade ago. So it's crazy to hear fringe conspiracy theory uh, discussions happening on CNN and Fox News and MSNBC. I don't believe a lot of the things that I've known about and heard to talked about for years, but it's interesting to hear them be talked about in the mainstream this way. Yeah. One thing I will say is that some things I won't be discussing. I don't know if you plan on discussing them, but I didn't plan on discussing some of the things that um, have camp came out. Candace Owens did a whole video a couple of days ago talking about Justin Bieber and all these things. Okay. The book that she's referencing there are people close to Kim Porter that, and we'll get into who Kim Porter is, but I'm just, I just want to lay the foundation of what you will not hear pro, most likely hear. I don't know anything about confirming um, anything that um, has been circulating about Justin Bieber in the last couple of days. There are some weird things that are undeniable that I may talk about, but I, I will not go on a deep dive because it leads to some things that we can't substantiate without going down the conspiracy, conspiracy hole. Yeah. So there are some things that I feel like have, been disillusioned by conspiracy and it's just fact now and some stuff that's still conspiracy that I don't feel comfortable going into because it gets a little crazy. You get what I'm saying, Fran? No, I get I, that. I, get I think that. you can get to what I'm alluding to. I'm sure you've yeah, seen a lot of TikTok Yeah, because some of that stuff is um, it's all alleged. We don't know about, the, you know, Kim Porter's, you know, this book. She, we don't know. I don't think that's something we can touch on. People closer have come out and said that a, she never wrote a book. There see, are people that have closer that came out and said, so anything that people are alleging okay, from a so book, we, right. it, there are people that are saying she never wrote a book. Yeah, we don't know what's true and what's false. So it's like, by touching on that, that can get a little messy because now we just spread rumors. Gossipy. That, I don't yeah. want to be gossipy. There's enough fact here to focus. And there's still enough fact here that we can speculate a little wildly without sounding insane and being defamatory. Because there is going to be some speculation in, in this uh, Life and Crimes of Diddy series. Okay, there's going to be some speculation. I have a lot of dots that I have connected from things that I've had in my mind about Diddy parties from videos yeah. that I've seen that now take a different context. Now that we know about the thousand dollar bottles of baby oil, which is man, a dubious freak bull behavior. I mean, like that many <laughs> bottles of baby oil is insane. Like it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's like unfathomable. I like, that's so many liters of, 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 of viscous slippery oil to do what with, I don't know, but the FBI has, confiscated all of the oil yeah now again we might be going to a dubious place he might have just like to see uh girls oiled up and wrestle in a, a, a pool yeah. with people watching we don't maybe know he got ashy skin maybe he just maybe like i need maybe it. it's a personal use yeah it gets cold in the winter time you know black people would crack like a yeah. white knuckle well, maybe sometimes. maybe yeah, maybe like it could be they could he could have had a deal with them where they like sent him all kinds of could have been anything you know something he could be sponsored by johnson and johnson but here's what i'll say we can say all that and make it innocent. Uh, there's nothing innocent about a thousand bottles. Of <laughs> Even if they're people. sending it to you for yeah. free for you to hold on to it and not give it to your friends to, to, to not, you know, parcel that out amongst the, to, to hoard that much oil, that much Earl is <laughs> insane. So uh, yeah, to get caught with your pants down, you know, uh, no pun intended. And the FBI is in your house. They, when they raid your house, they find a thousand bottles of the, of the oil you look, and especially what you're accused of, you look nasty. <laughs> like you look, you look nasty. And of course, so that's one aspect of this that is funny. Again, um, we will be covering the life and crimes of Mr. Sean Puffy Combs, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Love, um, Diddy Doo Wop. We've heard of, that he has many a name. Yeah. Um, soon to be uh, five two three five seven two eight or whatever his prison number will be, because this does end in uh, Sean Combs going to jail. Which is a it's, it's so weird to say that because this has been a person that's been a, it's Cosby esque. I was about to say this, it was a, weird to hear about Cosby doing the same thing. It's it this has been a person that's been a part of yeah. Black America. He's been a person on a pedestal. People have desired to be like him, idolized him, worshipped him, and we're gonna get into all of that. Yeah, he's one of those dudes where it was like when you got in the room, same room with Diddy. When you met Diddy, it was like oh, it was there was that that was synonymous synonymous with oh, I made it. Yes. It was like when you, I met Diddy. Taking pictures with Diddy, I thought, oh, I made it. Mm -hmm. I made it in this industry. I got to meet Diddy. But. And now we can contextualize a lot of what it means to meet Diddy and what yeah. the expectations can be when you meet Diddy or have met Diddy. What Diddy thinks of what it's like to meet Diddy and how he uses that. The control and the power in Diddy yeah. and how he used that against people. We will get into all of that in part one. 
again, we're talking now, so I don't know if this is going to – I could be wrong. We might be able to get this done in a tight 35. Doesn't feel likely because it's going to get tangity. It's going to get clippy. This is a wild ride. <laughs> Before we get into a friend, do you have any thoughts or, you know, would you like to just uh, start setting the scene? Um, I, I think it's still – hard to try to wrap your head around this whole thing because it's like it's diddy bro it's like take away all this other shit that we didn't find out it's like mm-hmm. no i mean this this is diddy man I make all the music with chris do the funny dance and shit like that and you know being he's a staple known to, he's an american right being known to find these great artists that we've loved the music to Ciroc. yes but to hear this it's like you hear you heard the rumblings over decades but it's like damn now it's finally it's just like r kelly was like we heard about this him messing with minors and shit like that, but then like now and it's like it's like you really cannot get away with it. It doesn't matter if it takes five, ten, fifteen, twenty years, whatever. You really unless you and you're still walking on this earth, it's hard to get away with anything. Yeah, and especially when you stay relevant for as long as you do, because right. the people that you victimize along the way have to see you continue to be on TV, continue to succeed, continue to make million dollar deals, and eventually they're gonna go. Either I want civil compensation or I want to see you fall. I'm sick of seeing you succeed when you did what you did to me. Yeah. Yeah. And he has a lot of victims, not just sexually, taking their livelihood, their masters, ruining their careers. He has so many victims that it's almost arrogant that he stayed relevant this long. Yeah. But like I said, you uh, somewhere else, it's all going to come crashing down. But some of the stories, I'm not going to mention them right now, but some of them I've heard is like, that it just can't, I can't. This can't be true. We talked to me. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say are, it. There are some that are like, I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> but again, that is, that is why I want to walk a fine line because as we start to lay out the life and crimes of Diddy, doors will open where I will feel comfortable going, well, did you hear about this story? Yeah. And I will say there are some doors that no matter what we discuss in, in the series of laying out the life and crimes of Diddy, some of these doors won't unlock for me. Where I go, I know what that door, I know what's behind that door. I don't think there's anything that I'm going to say in the notes in front of me that's going to make me go, let me go ahead and pop that key out. Let me open this door up. Because I don't think it's going to be relevant. It's going to be speculative and crazy yeah. and dark and weird. So some doors won't be opened. And I'm speaking in a frequency that over the last year or so, Frank, you've, start, you've started to understand the frequency that I'm speaking on. And there are people out there that understand the frequency that I'm speaking on. Yeah. Because you know some of the doors. So some doors won't be open in this podcast. This is still a true crime podcast. Let's keep it crime. Let's not go weird. You know, none of that. There's no, there's going to be no uh, black boule talk. I'm just going to, because there's some people that know what I'm talking about. There's going to be no black boule talk. There's going to be no, um, uh, uh, probably no uh, humiliation ritual stuff. There's probably not going to be any uh, sacrifice. None of that. We're not going to be talking sacrifice and all that type of stuff. This is strictly criminal with a little bit of speculation. (laughs) So, are you ready, friend? Yeah. Okay. So, Sean John Combs was born on November 4th, 1969. He was born in Harlem, as he proclaims and um, proudly says, but he was raised in Mount Vernon, New York. He was raised in the Catholic Church, and he served as an altar boy. Now, because we know where Diddy ends up, these are interesting tidbits. I was say, you going to uh, touch on that? Okay. About his early life. Listen, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, what I'm not going to do is sit here and tear down a dude who justify, who's justifiably deserves to be te- torn down and, and gloss over the Catholic Church. That's what's <laughs> not going to happen here. P. Diddy did some awful, nasty, dirty things, and there are a lot of people involved in the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church itself. A lot of dirty, nasty things have been done, and they're not going to get off scot-free while I tear down this black man. Justifiably so. But I'm not going to talk okay. about P. Diddy and his crimes and be like, well, yeah, he was an altar boy. Probably nothing happened. Because maybe nothing did happen, but it's possible something did happen yeah. because victims victimize. Um, so uh, he served as an altar boy. He graduated from Mount St. Michael Academy, which was an all boys Catholic school in 1987. Interesting again, because really what really what's at the heart of this story in a sense is a man who might've had certain appetites, might've had certain desires and in an industry that is very machismo, black people have the same thing. I don't know. There's not a word for it. Machismo. Black people, you, you know, your, your, your 
your father, if he's over the age of 50, your grandfather, these, these are conservative. A lot of older black men are conservative. They don't, they're not very progressive, gay, all that stuff. Seeing it on TV. This is the, this is the, these are the realities that we need to face. Homophobia. So talk about homophobia yes. So yeah. I'm not saying that because P. Diddy went to an all boys school, he's that he was gay as a kid, but I'm saying based on what we're hearing, he was at least bisexual. Yeah. And I don't think he yeah. felt comfortable being open about that. That's not, that doesn't make any of the things that he's accused of. Okay. But it makes you move a certain way and makes you kind of understand the secrecy and the domin dominance and the over sexualization and the uh, compensating by being like a womanizing sexually assaulting. This is a man who had some anger in him because maybe he couldn't express himself the way he wanted to. That's yeah. just a theory. Again, we, we're going to do a little speculation. Does that make sense? To, am I rambling yeah. or do you? No, 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 I get that. I mean, okay. when I, when I read over that tattoo, I was like, okay, he kind of, it, it makes sense a little bit. So, um, after graduating from high school, he uh, went to Howard University where he majored in business, but he only did about two years in school there, and then he moved back to New York to pursue a career in music. Um, also, fun little tidbit, he was given the nickname Puff when he was a kid because he would huff and puff when he was angry, which is a very, that's, that's such a, like, um, black way to have a nickname. Yeah. You know, like, you, I, might, I might have a friend named, like, Man Man, and you're like, why do, why are you, why do they call you Man Man? It's like, well, my mom just called me Man one day when I was five, and it just stuck. Yeah. Or, like, Boopy. Any of these nicknames, they all derive from something dumb and, uh, like, innocuous and meaningless. Like, a lot of these nicknames. Why, why is your name black? Because I'm really dark-skinned. Like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, Puff Puff, I don't, I, don't, I don't think Puff is a... That's kind of... That's, uh, it's unique. Uh, it's unique. It's unique. It's not really... It's not black and Man Man is like... There's yeah, a lot yeah. of those. Puff yeah. is a, it is, I will give, you know what? I stand corrected. Puff is unique. <laughs> you know? So it's I'll not just because he was like, you know what I'm saying? It's like black is just like, oh, he's, he's just, he's, black. he's just a, a dark skinned individual. Yeah. White that's, boy. That's Why easy. do they call you white boy? Cause, well, because I'm the only white boy in this group of black yeah. people, so they call me white boy. Now, um, uh, he did get a, he got to start working at Uptown Records. Um, he was an A and R. He was a party guy. He would do a lot of he would do a lot of parties. He was like a party promotion guy. If you ever been to Miami or Tampa or Vegas, uh, Diddy was one of those kind of guys. Like you know, I can get you a uh, Playboy. I can get you this uh, club tonight for free. You just got to get here at eight thirty. I get you in. Make sure you bring a couple of girls with you. That's he was that guy. He was a party promoter in the early days of his career. Mm. So this is kind of the. What's the snowball that started the avalanche? There were claims of sexual abuse and, ass and assault that started coming out about Diddy in 2023 after the New York Adult Survivors Act, which opened up a one-year window for survivors to sue their abusers and institutions that protected sexual predators was passed. That's now, insane. Yes. Now, but check this out. This is, this is crazy. Not crazy, but you know what? It's interesting. So... There was a book writer. I don't know if it's the same writer who's coming out and saying that they wrote the book about Kim Porter. Because I don't know for sure, I'm just going to say there was potentially another book writer that approached Diddy's team in 2023. They said, we got a, we got a story. We got a whole bunch of stories about Diddy and sexual assault. We're writing a tell-all book unless you give us $30 million. They gave him first right of refusal to catch and kill the story. This is, a, this is a popular term in Hollywood where it's like, basically, we're going to extort you. We have uh, a sex tape, uh, uh, compromising photos of you. Uh, we know you have a child. So unless you pay us X amount of money, we're going to leak the story. So somebody came to him with this and, and, and said, unless you pay us $30 million, we're going to put the book out. The team says no. Diddy says no. Whoever says no, they say no. The what was in the book started to, you know, people, when you start shopping a book around, yeah, people, you know, when you start going to publishers and stuff, people, you know, the script falls on people's desks or the, the manuscript falls on people's desks. People start reading, people start talking online. That's what happened. The story starts spreading around. You know, Diddy got a, you know, they say, and there's a book going around that's a legend that Diddy sexually assaulted a woman in, 19, in 1991, 1995, this, that, and the third. A prosecutor in New York picks up on the story. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors live to make their career on big names. So the prosecutor hears about this. They start doing some research and, and, and digging into this, this book. 
and they start seeing what the crimes are that, are, that are, he's being accused of in this manuscript, and the prosecutor's office goes, some of this seems kind of credible. We might be able to charge P. Diddy for a crime, which for a, a prosecutor, again, prosecutors aren't supposed to be household names. When they become household names, that's how you become DAs, mayors. You, you move up yeah, with big name cases. So I so say you all can that, just, But you can just get some information and go like, oh, we're going to charge. It. Like, you can pursue it, yeah. So it doesn't have to be a lawsuit? No. It could be a tip. You could go, but that's then weird. when you start digging. That's weird. That, that, and that's you start weird. pulling at a string and you start, you know, you start finding victims and stuff. You start building a case. They took a year to build a case hmm. off of a book that if he, and now oh, I forgot to mention this part. He ended up paying them the $30 million anyway once the story started going around on the internet. So once he, he found out that the story was being shopped around, the book was being shopped around, he paid the $30 million to kill the book anyway. So if he would have killed the book initially, we wouldn't even be here. He took his, his, his arrogance did this to himself. He was yeah. like, man, nobody's no, going gonna to write a book about Diddy and accuse me of that shit. They were like, okay, you, uh, I won't. They started doing it. He heard about what was in the book. He paid him the $30 million. The book stopped, but it was too late. The stories already started spreading around. A district attorney's office or a prosecutor's office picks it up in New York. They start pursuing it, and that's where we are today. Mm. They built the case off of that uh, whisper of information. It led to the prosecution of Diddy today. Hmm. So now it just it's oh. just sound so because I'm used to I guess just doing this you used to somebody going like hey this person did this, this to me and you go you kind of do your research with trying to find other victims and go like, all right let's, let's build this case then we kind of go after but to well, get a book to get like a script and be like well there were actual people who sued him civilly he just okay. settled a case for a hundred million dollars against somebody who sued him for sexual assault or sexual but whatever you this know? is before the book it was all at the same time. Oh, okay, this gotcha. law gets passed in New York that says you can sue people for sexual assault uh, no matter when it took place or like within a, 20 years, whatever it was. So then five people come out and sue him civilly. Gotcha. But some of those five people were a part of the stories in the book. Gotcha. So okay. it all was connected all right. in a sense. Like the, but the book is what kind of made it public because you, you can settle a case out of court and it won't go, you know, nobody will hear about it. Yeah. It but just because, sounds weird from like somebody getting the book. I, I think this person had a book and was like, "Oh wait, let's maybe we should." It just it just sounds. I, I just doesn't sound like uh tradition like a traditional way to kind of go after somebody. It just doesn't. With it a sounds, tell-all sounds book. Weird. Yeah, but it, I mean, but it wasn't published though. It wasn't like right. That's right. That's how inflammatory it was. That as soon as he heard that the book was being shopped around, he paid the person the money to stop shopping the book. Hmm. That's how damning he realized the book was once he started hearing about, you know, because, I mean, it's, it's P. Diddy. Yeah. If you go to, I don't know any publishing houses right now. I don't, know, I don't really know book publishing houses. But he's connected to everybody. So if somebody at a, at a publishing house calls P. Diddy's team and goes, hey, man, there's somebody shopping a book that's saying some crazy shit about you. And he goes, oh, shit, hey, Playboy, um, pay him the $30 million. Yeah. Kill that. But if he would have done that out of the gate, there's a real possibility that we would not be here a year later where we are today, yeah. which is him in handcuffs in a jail cell with no bond. So it's arrogance, because I'm not saying, we all know Diddy's worth a lot of money. I'm not saying $30 million is no amount of money, but he paid the $30 million anyway. That's crazy. So he had the $30 million the whole time. He just was so arrogant that he was like, man, fuck, what are you, yeah. fuck the, nobody's going to talk, say uh, anything bad about me. I'm not paying you. You're not going to extort me. And then you paid him anyway. Well, he probably was like, well, you're not going to play. You're not going to play my game with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think I'm weak and vulnerable like the women and the men that I do this to? No, no. I'm not one of them. I'm Diddy. That's true. So now that we've spoken about how we got here, mm -hmm. let's go back to the beginning. Or as far back as the, as the beginning as we can get to based on the things that are available to us in depositions and all those things. So, um, in 1990 and 91, according to a November 23 lawsuit, Sean Diddy Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall, who I don't know any of his songs offhand. I don't know if he was more of a writer. I know that song. Give it but your baby. I miss you. I know that song. Yes, so this is Aaron Hall. Very 90s. Yeah. 
very ballady, very baby face. So yeah. anyway, bald head, uh, yeah, bald head. Guy. Yes, yes, very bald head. Very <laughs> yes. You 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 see him even if you don't know him. You see him. Yeah, this is an R and B singer in the '90s. You know exactly what he looks like. <laughs> so um, allegedly, in 1990 and 1991, uh, Sean Combs and R and B singer Aaron Hall allegedly sexually assaulted Liza Gardner and a friend after an MCA records party. In her paperwork, she revealed that she was brought to the party by members of the R&B group Jodeci. She stated that she was close friends with the group and that Combs had been assigned to help develop the group during his time at MCA Uptown Records. Okay. She said Combs coerced her into sex after giving her alcohol despite her young age and they were at an after party at Hall's apartment. She recalls, cl- she recalls Combs climbing on top of her, forcing her skirt up, pulling her underwear to the side, and forcefully penetrating her. Obviously, this is, you know, about Diddy, but hearing this, I go like, this probably happens so this much. This is the music industry. Yes. In yes. the industry. Yes. Which I will, again, try to get into. Just don't let me don't let me veer off course too much because I do want to touch on that point, friend. So thank you for bringing that up. Diddy is the guy right now, but this is bigger than Diddy. As crazy as that as that sounds, because this story is so big, I think that this speaks more to the culture of the music industry and yeah. how it treats women and sees women than like Diddy is this freak. I don't, nasty even, I don't monster, and I which don't want to. Both can but, be true, right? Both can be true, but I still I saying that sounds weird. Was like. What you said about the women, but it's like we need to it's, it, we, it need to be more focused on the men in the industry. It's like these guys walk around with I'm the shit arrogance and being conceited and all this other shit was like I don't take no no is not a word. I'm that's foreign language to me. I don't know what no. You know who I am? Yes, yeah, and I think that that's and that's also another good point that's important to touch on because I think that the rebuttal to a lot of people and this is. Um, I need to get a uh, beep. We need to. We need to. I need to get a beep. Uh, drop. Oh, well, when you say some real shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, uh, if I want, if I saying somebody's name. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got one. If you want to say, if you want to say a name, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a beep for sure. Uh, oh, I'll let you know what I need. Let me, let me, hold on, let me see. Let me make sure it's, it's uh... Yeah. Okay. Um, can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. This is this is um accomplice language when we say things like. He could sleep with anybody he wanted to. Why would he do that? That is, no matter how handsome, no matter how rich, no matter how powerful a man is, people can still not want to do something in that moment, even if they like them. And that is still a no to them. And a person who can't accept no because of arrogance is still as dangerous as whatever yeah. ugly person you think is a sexual assaulter or a rapist. Yeah, but when we say that, it's it's consensual. Though. Like when, we, when people say that, obviously we, we mean... Of course. Yeah. Of course, but but I'm saying it's almost like denying. Like when you hear, if if you heard that raped or sexually assaulted, if you hear a story like that and you go, but well, he's like the sex, he was the sexiest man alive and he was, he's rich and famous and in movies and stuff. And you go, so it, it couldn't have happened. Why would he need to do that? And it's like, rape isn't about sex a lot of times. It's about power and dominance. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's why I'm saying like a woman might be madly in love and a big fan of but in that moment, they might have wanted to date this person, be, be wooed by this person, be treated like a person by this person. And so they might not want to do the deed right then and there. But it's like, well, no, but um, I want my dick sucked or yeah. I want to have sex right now. And so you're just going to do that. Like, I'm not looking to. I don't want to date you. I just want to use you for the moment. And so I think people get it's hard for people to fathom that because you go, but they're handsome or they're rich or they're power. You know, like they can have anybody they want to. And it's like, well. But in that moment, they wanted that person. And maybe that person was hesitant, yeah. bashful, whatever. And, you know, signals got crossed or just forcefully was assault took place. It's not, it's not like impossible to be rich and handsome. And like, that means you wouldn't hurt somebody or sexually assault somebody. So that, I think you make a good point there about the arrogance and walking around conceited and you no, know, you don't know the word, answer the word. No, you don't know. It's not in your vocabulary. That's how this can lead to these things sometimes for people who you might think is crazy to hear that they are accused of sexual assault. Yeah. And Diddy is not a handsome man, but he's very, 
he's very wealthy and powerful. And I think there's a lot of people out there that go, man, Diddy wouldn't. Why would he need to do that? There's plenty of women that would line up to do whatever he wanted to, him them to do. And it's like, those are not the ones they want. <sighs> See, that's why I wish you had the button. <laughs> now I wish you had the button too. <laughs> that was one of those moments. <laughs> so uh, back to this story from Liza Gardner. Um, so she recalls that after Combs finished, she was in the bed shocked and traumatized. And as she was getting dressed, Aaron Hall barged in, pinned her down, and forced her to have sex with him as well. No, this is crazy. But this also think about the, the stories that we've heard, the freak-offs in the rooms. and You kind of start to see, this is, 90, this is early, 1991. You kind of see the early foundations of like, yeah, man, we got a, we're in the house. My girl is your girl. Your girl is my girl. We're passing. You're starting to see the, the foundations of like, this is what he does. He's like, I like to, I like, sometimes I like to watch. Sometimes I like to pass. I like other people to have sex with my girl. And I'm not in the context of this, this is sexual assault. Yeah. But I'm just saying like how they maneuvered in this was very like freak offy and, and nasty and very freak bull. <laughs> it's just like how, but how do you in a night like I'm laughing because I can't, I just can't fathom this. That's why I'm laughing. But how do you in a night like this and go like, man, that was a blast. What a night. Yeah. It's like, you, do you not know? It's like, you're that so far gone where he's like, you have no idea what you just did to this person. Or you have a, exactly an idea and you went, that's like, that's what sex is to me. Or that's how I get, that's how I get off, man. I, we wanted to run that's a train or whatever the thing is that they thought in their mind that they just did. It wasn't that. So it speaks to the depravity of the people. Where it's like, oh yeah, you're done, my turn. Where is this Aaron Hall? Is he like? Uh, somewhere in hiding. Fell off when Diddy got arrested, head. so many people were like, "Oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and retire. I'm, I'm done being a CEO." This, there's gonna be a massive changeover in, in um, the music industry, which I will speak to because that's already taking place, and I have my theories on that as well. I really hope that I'm able to. That's why I think it's gonna be multiple parts because I really hope I'm able to reel in. My brain is going a thousand miles an hour. Why do people look so much older than that then than they do now? <laughs> what is up with that? I don't know, but I saw a picture of Marvin Gaye, and they were like, "He's 24 years old right there," and I went. What? <laughs> Marvin Gaye. You can look up any picture of Marvin Gaye. You go, that's a 40-year-old man. He's handsome, but that's a 40-year-old man. It's like, no, that's a picture of Marvin Gaye. He's 23. But how how is a bald head? A hair, how was that a style in the in, a, in the? <laughs> that's a good question, bro. You just like you couldn't you just, pay me to voluntarily shave all my hair off just, my head and oil it up. <laughs> and that was the hottest. You just it was the hottest look in the in the world. Yeah, you just like you volunteered to be like, no, I'm a, no, the bald head is hot right now. So yeah, I'm cut all this shit off. Shave all my head off. And then get a black suit and glasses, and then we all you're the man. Tell my, my you're, the, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man. Yeah. So, um, that's crazy how this is. Look, that's crazy how that's the 90s. That's, that's the, that's that's the 90s. Bald head, black suit, turtleneck, gold chain. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Liza Gardner also re recalls that both men also took turns having sex with her friend in another room. And like I said, you see the early stages of freak off. So this was, this was P Diddy. This was not a rich, this was not a rich man. This was not the guy that we know today. And so money just made him more of what he already was. He liked having girls in other rooms, doing what he wanted with them against their will, consensually, both men, women, more money just gave him more, more money gave him more problems. Calling the freak off is, is wild. Yeah. So it's the, the fact that that's in the indictment, like the, yeah. the fact that that's like what this is, you know, a big part of his charges are for these freak offs and just saying that so casually, like, yeah, you want to come over for a freak off? And they were talking about IVs and they're so tired after that's crazy. days of. That, yeah, that's 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 past. That's uh, what you call it. Um, That's trafficking. That's. Yeah, this is this is a deviant, bro. Like, yeah, we've been having sex for three days. We've been we've been sexually assaulting and being malicious, deviant, depra depraved animals for two days. Bring the doctors in here. Let's all get yeah, our fluids back up. Nah, that's crazy. But what is the is the freak offs after the all white party? Is it like no, no? The party is from the seven, stories I've the heard. Freak off is from the 12. stories I've heard is there's plenty of people because here's the thing. Now what's happening is, but when you stay past eleven thirty, that's how we know you had the freak off. You went for the freak off. If what? It's like when you go, when you stay after a certain time, a certain, that's how I know. A certain time, one, 
And a lot of people, because a lot of, there's a lot of people that can pull up a picture of, you can pull up a picture of any celebrity next to P. Diddy and you go, see, they were probably at the freak offs too. From what I'm hearing is the all white parties and the parties took place in the backyard. Okay. In the house is where a lot of that stuff was taking place after a certain time. After so there's certain, plenty okay. of people that were like, I was in the backyard. They have uh, ice luges and fountains, and there were beautiful women that I was talking to, but we were all out, out in the backyard. I, went, I, I never saw that. There's plenty of people that go, I never saw any of, that, any of that shit. And what it is is they already know who's into that shit before they show up. Okay. So they already know, like, hey, man, come in the house, go down to the basement. That's where the freak-offs happen. But and there's other people that are sound, like, I'm here to mingle I, and do business. I don't know whatever. if I believe that, though. I don't know if I – it just sounds like – that happens after that's an after hours type of thing. People are people. Oh, that's the not, party dwindles. The party, you know, okay, disp- right. disperses. So for it's sure. like, but Matter I mean, like, oh, so oh, it's oh, that's what I'm saying. Is it is it time or is there is like a you kind of when you come in all white, you got like a pen or something. You know how like a upside down pineapple. Oh, that means upside down you're pineapple down the freak. A, yeah, you you know you 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 uh what do you call it a um you down for um what's it, what's what's the term for that um. DTF down the freak? Uh, no, oh. the upside down pineapple. What is the, that's, that's a term for? Oh, that's um, a swinger. Swinger, swinger. Yeah, so like swinger. you come in they with might the have pen, some shit like that. Yeah, you come in with the pen on your joint. You know the, the right. freak off concierge. Yeah, that's like, are you here for the white party or are you here for something else? You gotta show your pen. You gotta show your pen yeah, on your joint. Oh, okay, your cool. Joint. You're, that's downstairs. You don't got They don't. You don't have to. Whoever greets you in, just sees your pen. They don't say nothing because it's all. You gotta keep it discreet. So it's like, oh. Well, Come in. Or oh, it's like, what's the secret password? You go like, you know, uh, take love. that, take that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's going like down, that. down in the basement. Right. Yeah. And the, if you're here for the, you're here. Oh, I'm just here for the all white party. Okay, cool. Hello. Um, that's happening in the back. <laughs> yeah. There's hors d'oeuvres. And cause my whole thing is like, this is a man who wears many hats and that's got, that's going to be hard for a lot of people to accept. It's like, I'm sure there's been plenty of parties. What is many hats? In what way is he wearing many hats? Okay. <laughs> well, well, figuratively <laughs> and literally he might have a hat with a little, a little shaboying hanging from the forehead. <laughs> this is a dark man. So that's right. He, he, I mean, figuratively. I mean, he wears many hats as far as like, yes, he is a deviant and a, 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 a nasty guy. <laughs> but I'm also sure he, this guy knows how to just throw a fun party. I'm sure there's plenty of people that have gone to fun ditty parties where the food was banging, but, the music right. was great, and they yeah. went home and nothing happened. Right. But it, it had to be. I want, I want to hear the stories where people were like, no, Diddy throws a great party. I had a great time. I went downstairs, you know, just to, just take a little peek. What was going on? I was like, nah. It went on there, it smells like baby oil and feet and chill. It was like, I'm good. But I, I could tell they was having the, having the ball down there. Would you like for us to ha- play our first one of those type of things? Please. One thing that was happening recently was that with the whole cancellation of Diddy, but this was something I've been talking about for years because it's like a, now a documented thing that I saw him like at a party in Miami and I took ecstasy and I ended up wandering around in some mansion on Star Island and I guess it was his mansion. <laughs> walked in a room I shouldn't have walked into and I saw him like hooking up with a dude, basically like full spoon so situation. So who is context? I don't know the house dad who's like a producer. Who is this? Yeah. This is the Fat Jewish. For people who don't remember the Fat Jewish, the Fat Jewish was really popular on Instagram like 10 years ago. Okay. He got in some controversy because it a lot of his content that he was um, posting on Instagram, basically he got enough followers that he just started stealing other people's memes and posting them on his page. And so if you made a funny meme and got five views, he'd go to your page, steal it, put it on his page, get a million views, and then get a check from Instagram. Wow. So he was just like a funny, you know, he was like an Instagram account you follow that posted yeah. funny memes. But he made a lot of money and he became a, a very popular social media personality from that. Enough that he ended up on Star Island at a Diddy party. And wow, is that enough context? Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. Cool. yeah. Right, so, I, so I just didn't know who this was. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, this is the fat Jewish. I then told the story on a podcast and then his people called me and were like, you need to say you were joking. Like, say you're a funny guy and like you made it up for the yeah. views. And I was yeah. like, but I, no, but I did not. I saw it, and he saw me when I came in. Were you, like, a little scared? Yes, yeah, because everyone in the room, like, stopped, because I opened the door and was like, is this the bathroom? And everyone was like, no, this is a room where, like, male celebrities hook up. And then he basically had people call me and, like, threaten me and, like, tell me that if I didn't take it back and say I was joking. And you still didn't take it back? Yes, no. And then I talked about it on Hot 97, and I told the story, and then afterwards he was like, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to run this interview, because, like, Diddy's insane, and he'll, like, he blew up Kid Cudi's car. Okay, so that was the first piece of, like, um, um, a, a story from a couple of years ago that now in 2024, the context, the 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 conspiracy of it all, it's more so believable. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts after hearing something like that? Um, I, I, be, I believe it. 
I mean, I, I, that's the first time I heard a story where somebody was like, they went and just checked around. I was like, oh, shit, what the hell was going on here? Yeah, I stumbled into a room. I, my yeah. favorite part in that video is where he goes, everybody just kind of stopped. And you go, how many people were? Because yeah. that's not in this clip that I just played. I don't know yeah. if it was just those two people that he described or if it was like two people on the bed and then five guys standing around. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I imagine like a pool of snakes. Everybody just all like, and everybody just look. Like a deer in headlights, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're like, whoa. <laughs> you're like, this is a lot happening. And like, who's that? Is that a stinks you know, celebrity? You're like, shit, what? And I don't want to say any names because I don't want again, I don't want to be inflammatory. But again, and you know something, again, like I talked about earlier about the homophobia and all these things. The fat Jewish obviously is not black, but the, you know, he's speaking about hip hop and all these things. And to a point, if I go, if, if everybody in that room is consenting adults, that's his business. Yeah. But in 2024, we now know that he was uh the sex workers were men, women. Uh, there was drugs. Some people were drugged, not unknowingly. So you go, so it goes from, okay, the fat Jewish just kind of put on blast that Diddy might be gay to, he might've seen an act of sex trafficking, uh, a sexual coercion, sexual assault taking place. And so that, that's where it's not private anymore. Cause it's like, I don't, Diddy doesn't have to come out and tell us all his sexual orientation yeah. is, is how I might've seen a video like that four years ago. If I heard it four years ago, I go, whether it's true, whether it's not, what does it matter? That's Diddy's business. But now in 2024, it takes on a different context. Right. Now that we know this freak-off term. Yeah. Clearly, he walked in on a freak-off. In full and effect. Now what we know for freak-offs is like depravity and maybe <laughs> Ill illegal activity <laughs> and potentially some sexual assault. So yeah. the, the, when you put the t tag it with freak-off, shit goes sideways. As I said, I have more examples where you go, once you have the, the, the terminology of freak-off, you go, oh, shit, this story sounds different now. Yeah, freak out. Men and women, we all, it's all, we all, we all get down. Yes. And some people get down against their will. Some people get down under the influence, and that kind of blurs yeah. the line. Some people are here and being paid, and we're flown in here for this act, yeah. and that's illegal. That's sex trafficking. It, it all, it gets right. muddy. Some people is like, why are you here? Why, uh, this, why, why is this person here? These specific people, I go like, what are you, what are you, why are you here? Yeah. This isn't. You a freak uh, bull like that? Yeah. The, <laughs> This isn't the bowling party. The bowling party's next week. No, I mean, like, the names that we heard that was in these parties, the names we heard that in these, par <laughs> in these parties. Yeah, was like, listen. Why was he there? When I heard T.D. Jakes. Oh, that's crazy. Now, maybe, well, I'm listen. Not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not shocked about that. I'm not even, listen, I told you some doors I'm not opening. <laughs> right, we, don't door I'm not, we don't even need to. But uh, do, uh, do you agree or disagree? I don't know. I don't, even, I don't even want to pry into why you're not surprised. Oh, I man. Just you going to leave you in the island like that? That's, that's crazy. Just, that's that's crazy. On. I just want to move on. I don't want to know why you're not surprised. I just want to move on. Because some door, that I don't have the key to that door, man. I don't have the key to that door today. I don't have the key to that door today, man. He'll like a little freak bull to you? <laughs> oh, man. No, listen. The idea of T.D. Jakes being oiled up in a thousand bottles of baby oil with that, that powerful voice and the way he speaks is wild. <laughs> and so I like to think hopefully that he just came to the parties and just ate food and mingled and did business. I don't like to think that T.D. Jakes went inside and was at the, don't let at the, gospel the, at the DTF don't let, party. Don't let, don't let the gospel stuff fool you. <laughs> Come out the closet and stop keeping a secret and let the world know if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Would have been. I would have been. I would have been. I would have been. I would have been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have Pause. you gone through a time of swallowing? Pause. <laughs> That's crazy. He said that in a room full of people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would, I'm just gonna move on. I don't even I don't even want to know. Swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed? So, That's yeah, uh, yeah, uh, definitely on the freak bowl list, but I don't want to go any further into it. I'll, that's Those are T.D. Jake's, one of his sermons, and he felt like people should hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, sorry for going off on a tangent. Let's get back to Liza Gardner, right? We've been talking about Liza Gardner's um, accusation this whole time. Um, she claimed that the next day, Combs showed up at her door and began assaulting and choking her until she passed out. Wow. This is a form of intimidation, uh, witness silencing, and, you know, striking fear in your victim to make them not speak about you. So it's like, they did this last night. He comes, allegedly, they did this last night. He comes back the next day to hurt her. To me says, 
shut the fuck up about what happened last night. No. This victim, Liza Gardner, at the time was allegedly 16 years old at, you know, at the time of this assault. Mm. So she was 16 years old. Um, and in 1991, so P. Diddy was born in 1969. P. Diddy, she's 16. P. Diddy's about 21, 22 years old. So according to an allegation made on November 23rd, 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal, a former Syracuse University student, alleged that Sean Combs sexually assaulted her while they were out at dinner at Well, at well Restaurant in Harlem. The filing claimed that Combs gave her drugs that put her in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. Again, when we talk about um, Cosby, when we talk about uh, a playbook, a system, an institution, you go, this, we can't just keep saying all these individual people are freak bulls. This is the industry. This is, you know, I'm sure they have terminology for it in the industry of like, you know, you just got to get over the edge. You just got to, uh, you know, just got to uh, finish strong. All these things. Well, oh, yeah, she was, uh, you know, she came out to dinner with me. I just wanted to make sure I got over the finish line. So I put a little something in her drink to make sure she was feeling loosey goosey and having as much fun as me. This is probably how these men in these positions justify drugging and sexually assaulting women. Where they go, she was going to do it anyway. She just needed a little nudge. Yeah. And that nudge being drugs to the point that they can't stand independently. Now, uh, Puffy, Diddy, Daddy, allegedly filmed the incident and showed the video to others in an act described as revenge porn. Again, now that we have terminology, we can put it into context. Because in the 90s, a guy like Puff Daddy is just definitely like, yo, I'm going to show my friends. And now also you keep in mind who we're talking about why do you want to film it and show all your friends? Why do you want a bunch of men in a room with you potentially with erections? Yeah. Showing them hardcore pornography and also v evidence of your crime. Revenge porn, now that we have the term, you go, oh, yeah, that's bad. Revenge porn is bad. But in the 90s, they go, yeah, man, you know, he made a little sex tape. Uh, this woman was uh, 19 years old at the time, uh, Joy Dickerson Neal. She was 19 years old at the time. She said the incident left her traumatized, which resulted in her dropping out of college and giving up her dreams of having a career in the music industry. So again, wow. Puffy's in the music industry. He's using his connections to um, curry favor with people, ha uh, you know, set up meetings, set up interactions, and he's destroying people's dreams. You know, this woman might have wanted to be an a and a manager, whatever, and then she gets this harsh realization that, is this what the music industry is? I'm done. I've been in school, learning business and everything, and now I'm changing career paths. I'm traumatized. I never want to be in music again it's at 19 years old. For somebody at his stature to do something like that is to you. But also keep in mind, this is, this is, this is 91. He's oh, not, true. this is he's a, not even did this yet. is a, he's, he's an a and himself. This is a guy that's going out trying to find talent, yeah. sign artists. He's not known. He's not in music videos. Right. This is so a behind not even, the scenes guy. He's not guy. Diddy. He's not Diddy. He's not Diddy. Know. He's, yeah. They might call him Puff, but just because that's his name that he tells people to call him. Right. He's not a known person yet. And still, with this little bit of power, industry power, he used it in this way. Hey, but do you think LeBron James got some stories where he's like, Savannah was like, no, let's get out of here. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and we'll never hear them. Because do you, do you think the videos is, gonna come out, though? I'm sorry? Do you think we'll see video? No. You don't if think there so? are videos, I don't think I think they will be sealed. I don't think they will leak on the internet. I don't I think that they're too volatile okay. to for that to happen. I okay. think that they will be under lock and key. I don't think we'll ever see a video of like closed caption so on the ceiling footage of a of a, a camera in Diddy's house while there's a freak off happening and there's like LeBron James running around butt naked and no. P. Diddy and models and shit. I don't bro, think don't about think so? what that would do to the internet. And I don't mean to hyper, be hyperbolic, but something like that hitting the, the internet would be like if Jesus came back. <laughs> it would be, it would, I think it would like really do something to the, the structure of society to see something like that. Like, what do you mean though? Like you a beloved, that. we're talking about A-list celebrities. Yeah. Like imagine a video coming out of a ceiling camera in Diddy's house, Diddy's naked, Leonardo DiCaprio, LeBron yeah. James running around his models and shit, baby oil slipping around. You'd be. It would break the internet in a way that is like bad. I don't think that. So you don't think we need, we don't need to see anything like that. You don't think we as a society the, I mean, need the, for like the that. salaciousness of it all, 
I'm not going to say what we need or don't need. I'm just saying I think that what does that do to you think like LeBron James can't come back from that. I'm th- I'm I'm like, saying it would as far, do I think the image like like it would just it these that would be very bad to see things. It would be very not bad just because LeBron I, James. I mean anybody. I, but I think that it's something we need to see where it's like we need to kind of change the image of a celebrity in. I get you. You said t- tear the statue down. Tear it. Tear it. Stop down. idolizing. Stop. You know. Yes. Stop it. Yes. These people are one hundred percent. Yes. Rich people freak with freaky uh, high ideations and yes and talent and their talent yes. I get that. Seeing Leonardo DiCaprio, because again, when, he, you, talk about con- know when, when you talk about context, right? Uh, there's a video of P. Diddy being like, oh, one of my favorite people to party with is Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. So no now you, I'm, I'm fine to open that door. Leonardo DiCaprio is, I think, like 45 years old. As soon as his girlfriends turn 25, he dumps them. Yeah. <laughs> he dates women between 19 <laughs> and, and 25 years old. This is a yeah. guy who's flying barely legal women at 40 plus years old, flying barely, barely legal women all around the world to sleep with them until, and, and play with them until they get too old and then he dumps them. Yeah. That is not a relationship. That is not love. That is lust and using and using his influence and power to make it happen, to make, to sweeten the pot for them. So go, I know you're 19 and like, you're barely, like you're barely an adult and you're mesmerized by my celebrity and I'm going to use that to use your body for my own pleasure until I don't want to anymore. And now that, again, I'm going to play this just because I've fallen into the context of it. Let me make sure I just um, finish talking about, because I don't want to um, skip anybody's story. So we did finish talking about uh, Joy Dickerson Neal. Yeah, we wrapped that up. She left the industry. Yeah. So now that I'm talking about celebrity and the power and everything like that. This is this this hurts me to play. But it's real. And it it sums up so much of what we're talking about already that so this, this is th- this is Jamie Foxx. Okay. And okay. this is again, I've heard this I used to watch Foxhole radio clips on YouTube for the for 10 years. They're so funny. He he it was a radio show, he was giving it up real. He was talking about celebrities, crossing some Jamie lines Fox? that he huh? It's called Fox Hole Radio? It was on Sirius. He had, he had a station on Sirius. I didn't know that. Okay. And he would be on there sometimes. Obviously, he's Jamie Foxx, so he's busy. But whenever he was on there, he would give it up. He would talk about movies that were out, you know, Monique and Precious. And he would talk about these celebrity interactions, and he would be real, almost too real, where it was like, I think sometimes he might have gotten in trouble. Because <laughs> he was being like, you're supposed to be Jamie Foxx and Oscar nominated and stuff. And he'd be like, man, that bitch, man, man fuck that. He, would, he was giving it up real. He and was about to get in trouble on Sirius XM Radio? Well, not That's what in, not on Sirius oh. XM Radio, but like as Jamie Foxx, where he goes, "Yeah, gotcha. Jamie Foxx, why are you talking yeah. about Miley Cyrus yeah, yeah, like that? Yeah, 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 or gotcha. why are you insulting Taylor Swift? Because he's still Jamie Foxx." I think sometimes Jamie Foxx doesn't realize, or this is years ago. This is ten years ago. These clips are ten years old. But I think Jamie Foxx didn't realize like all that. I'm a comedian shit. When you're a certain celebrity, it's like, no, bro, you you can get in trouble. Kevin Hart, you get to a certain level, it's like Kevin Hart, you can't just you can't just talk about whoever you want to. You could get in trouble. So I think he had to realize like. And he stopped doing the show eventually. But anyway, this is a clip that 10 years ago to me was like an innocuous funny story. Now in 2024, it reads a lot different and I want to play it. But it, it speaks to Leonardo DiCaprio and a lot of these guys at these parties. And um, him, him putting into the perspective this way, I think is really interesting and important. We're still in 91, but we're about to move into B, uh, P. Diddy or Puff Daddy becoming Puff Daddy. Mm-hmm. And this is a story about Puff Daddy when he was full Puff Daddy in the 90s. Gotcha. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but then I'm going to go back and really still flush out the origins of P. Diddy. But we're going to jump forward a little bit into his celebrity. Okay. This is one of the stories of P. Diddy. So we've told a couple of stories of him just being a nobody in the industry. And mm-hmm. now I'm gonna hear, you're going to hear somebody tell a story of P. Diddy when he's the guy that we know. This is Jamie Foxx again. You know what I call it? Let me get folks. You know what I call it when you're hot? I call it mist. It's a certain mist. He said, he said, you know what I call it when you're hot? Meaning when you got a movie out, when you're popular in Hollywood, when you're hot, I call it the mist. The mist. So this this okay. is Jamie Foxx on The Mist. When you're hot, people really can't even see what you look like. Women actually think you look better than what you look. I'm going to give you a story. Let me get focused. Let me tell you about The Mist. Back in the day when Puff had this out, bum 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 go and no way. But that motherfucker was blazing fucking hot. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. I'm gonna tell you how I know. I'm in. I'm. I'm at a party 
that is very, uh, uh, is it the best, uh, I won't say where it was, but it was very notorious. It was a notorious party. Put it to you that way. Okay. okay. And it was, we okay. had bungalows, uh, drugs, and alcohol. And I mean, God damn it. and God damn it, we wasn't doing no nigga shit. We was on some, we would have, we had guitar strings and no guitar. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I'm okay. with you. So he's describing a freak off. Yeah. Like that is, with us knowing in 2024 guitar what he's describing, no he's describing a freak off. Yeah. I will continue. Guitar strings, no guitar. <laughs> you understand what's going on? Thank you. I said, we doing that. So I had these two girls that would come hang with me, bad as a motherfucker. One was Hispanic. One was like this sort of, it was a white baby. She had these like, like, like uh, features like a black girl, like thick lips, gorgeous. I would walk around with them. They would have on a tank top, jeans and shoes, and white dudes would be like, I have to marry her. Who, who are they? I said, <laughs> And just my friends. What they didn't know was it was some stripper friends of mine from Seattle. <laughs> but they was they was wifey fine. Like they was yeah. like fine. But they I wouldn't fraternize with them because they my friends. I knew what they get down was. They hook a sideways hook, a lightweight hooking. You know what I'm saying? But right. they they gorgeous. Right. So we. So I'm gonna pause again just so I can explain the context in which I'm playing this clip. So Jamie Fox has just described, in a sense, a form of sex trafficking, consensual or not. Basically, these parties are all these dudes bring beautiful women to parties mm -hmm. to be spread around and up for the taking for the other celebrities in the in the party. This is a freak off. So Jamie Foxx goes, I flew into two of my uh, best looking friends, quote unquote, from Seattle. I don't sleep with them because I know that they are basically high price hookers is what he described them as. So when you, you talk about. Uh, peddling of the flesh and all these things like he these women are flown in they know they they know the parties that they're going to i assume um and jamie fox it looks good for jamie fox to come in with these two beautiful women it's like oh damn jamie you brought them it's like yeah but you know they're whoever wants to talk to them you're welcome to do that because they're just my friends but jamie fox looks good you, you he speaks to all these these men are like i have to marry them that looks that makes jamie fox looks good so of course he flies the men to bring them to this party so he looks good bringing in two beautiful women, but then also it's like I'm coming here to do what I want to do. So this is a this is a freak. Who, Jamie saying that? Jamie Foxx, yeah, he's saying these. I brought these two women here. Yeah, I brought these two beautiful women, but they are basically they'll sleep with men for money. Yeah. So I brought them to the freak off to mingle, because it's almost like you come to the party, you got to bring party favors, and his yeah. party favors were women. And I think a lot mm. of these dudes, Diddy in particular, is what he's charged with sex trafficking. Whether it's in, um, consensual or not consensual, the sex trafficking is I flew in women to have sex with people for money. Yeah. And basically, I don't, again, I don't want to be too inflammatory, but that's what I'm hearing Jamie Foxx say he did. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, I have two women friends. They Regardless are, they, they if are you, sex they workers. They walked in with you or not. Does yeah, it? like they are sex workers. They're my friends. They came yeah. with me. He's, he's saying that. They came with me, but I don't do anything with them because I know what they do. I know how they get down, but I brought them to the party. At this party is bungalows and guitar strings and no guitars. It's a notorious party. I continue. The, the party is, is in Fuego. And I mean, it's, it's, it's Puff, Puff is throwing the party. We going crazy, right? So the girl said, Jamie, how can we have a fuck? The finest one. You know, I said, what? How can we have a fuck? You don't want this? I said, no, you know, you're my friend and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't cross some lines. I got pretty girlfriends. You know, I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, suit yourself. So the party and so on. We getting more fucked up. It's really now it's like three in the morning. I'm I'm coming out the bathroom. She's standing there, asshole <laughs> naked. I says, Jamie, goddammit, you're gonna deny this? I start pulling my shoes off immediately. I said, nah, I ain't no goddamn stuff. I ain't no shit, man. Don't don't test my goddamn up uh, uh, pickle now. Don't, don't test. So so I had to I had to accept the challenge. But I'm digging. But I'm on the on the floor, slippery in the hotel. I can't get no. Probably because of all the baby oil. Uh, letter, so I'm like, well, shit, I don't want to, this is my only chance. I want to let her know I bring the humps, right? So I, I you know, I let mandingo, bring the humps. I, I mandingo <laughs> the shit into the bedroom, lift it up, you know. Now, nah, let me get you to a, a more stable place. <laughs> so, so I take her into the bedroom. Now, you know how you get your feet up against the, because in them hotels. Now, let me pause real quick. My question is, where were they? Like, th now he took her to the bedroom. So, again, 3 in the morning. These are all things we're yeah. hearing. The party got late. The freak-off is in full swing. 
Now he no, picks, her gotta up picks her to a bedroom. You gotta, y'all got to be on drugs. No way that y'all do all this all night long, bro. I'm sorry. I don't care how much of a freak boy you are, bro. No, there's no way, bro. There's no possible way. Y'all he said something. as the night progressed, this shit yeah. happened. Now I come out of the bathroom. So they already been to the party. I come out of the bathroom. Now <laughs> she's naked. We've been at the party for hours. Yeah. What is it? You know, tell, Jeremy, the thing is, he not, you're not finna tell me that he's, you ain't been doing nothing this whole time. No, he said they had all the guitar strings, no guitar. You know, he said they were on that shit. He said he got more fucked up as the night. Gotta this, be. Bro. This is gotta a freak be. off, bro. And I, I don't know. I don't know if people would miss it, but he said this puffy's throwing this party. The little, the other little board of the headboard and that other little thing. Right, right. Yeah, that's the leverage board. Exactly. So I got the leverage board. So now I'm shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 I'm rushing like Reggie White from the fucking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm digging, right? Dig the. So I'm getting it. But people are running through the, the, the place. It's a hotel room, and it's a bungalow. So she flips. Oh, my God, just back that up. You have these people looking at me. What the fuck are you doing? I said, what are you talking about? No, you did it. You did it. I cannot believe I slept with you. I could be with anybody. And at that time, I didn't have no mess. I was just, you know, I was just... <laughs> On TV, I can't believe I slept with you. I can sleep with anybody. I can sleep with the Maloof brothers. I can sleep with so many people more rich than you. Look at you. I can't believe it. And she's going on. And you and your fucking ugly teeth. No, 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 no. And then I went, what is your fucking ugly teeth? I uh, and then I thought, hold on, bitch. Hold on. Hold on now. So I got paranoid because she kept on my teeth so goddamn You and your fucking ugly teeth. I can be with anybody. Then her friend comes in. Then they start going, oh, my God, go, oh, my God, go, oh, yeah, yeah, he did it. Look at him, yeah, and his ugly fucking teeth. And I'm like... <laughs> Y'all basically got one more time to say something about my goddamn teeth. She said, we're going to Now, I want to I wanna take a second again, because I don't know if the audio is clear for everybody. Yeah, He's describing a moment where he was having consensual sex, allegedly. He was having consensual sex in a bungalow or a, a giant open hotel. There's people running in and out of the rooms, and the woman got scared and felt like maybe somebody... Maybe somebody else was trying to tag in. Mm. She got uncomfortable and felt like Jamie Foxx was setting her up to potentially be sexually assaulted or attacked. Mm, yeah. And he's saying she flipped it on me and is like makes it, making me feel like I did something wrong when I didn't. Yeah. This is all alleged because I don't know what Jamie Foxx's intentions was. But he's saying this story openly. I was having sex with this girl. She was telling me, well, why haven't we hooked up? We started hooking up. Then some other, this is also, again, freak bull. There's, when he goes, People running in and out of the rooms, giggling and shit, and wearing dog masks. I don't know what the hell's going on, but she went, oh, my God, you set this up. And he's like, what? And yeah. he's saying, basically, I wasn't that famous at the time. Man, so miss. he didn't have the mist. So she started <laughs> getting upset because it's like, I was giving you, I was being charitable. I could be having sex with a lot more powerful and popular people at this party. But I was like, let me do you a favor. And you set this up to get me, I don't know what she was, gang- Assault, yeah. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what she was saying, but from his comedic perspective, it sounds like this was a crazy mix up. But now in 2024, in the context of a freak off, you go, we don't know what this woman's been through. Yeah. And she's seeing other. And also we talked about the Diddy accusation from 91 with him and that R&B singer, Aaron Hall. Right. Men. Oh, yeah. Let me jump in now. We don't know what that woman might have felt. So I just want to take a second to put into context why I'm why I'm playing this in totality. I'm going back in for everything you got you probably don't have anything you don't have any money we're gonna sue you for so now i'm shut down because i'm like what the fuck do i do i don't have no money these girls is, is really pulling this on now i'm scared all of a sudden puffy walks in no shirt on he doesn't work out <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand what i'm saying yeah. he does not work out right he got a gold chain on that could buy a small south american city right <laughs> He has a bottle of Cristal in his hand. He looks at me and says, Playboy, what's wrong? I said, man, uh, some shit. Uh, <laughs> man, it's crazy shit. They talking about them, something about my teeth and shit. You know. What's wrong with your teeth, Playboy? I said, oh, no, they keep. <laughs> you know, they keep. <laughs> they talking about my teeth. And so he goes up to them. Now, mind you, they getting ready to go to the police and say, I had something to do with something. That kind of right. shit. You felt that feeling before. Hey, yes, right, right. 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 He walks up and said, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Also, mind. for the record, real pause, I've never felt that feeling before. So I don't like it. Like, never... People are like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, <laughs> you know how women, women accuse you of sexual assault? You know that feeling. I've never had that feeling before. I just want to say that. <laughs> I, would, I would have been one of them anyway. Yeah. I know. Like, oh, I know I like, exactly that feeling. I don't know, I don't know what you're <laughs> I don't. I don't, care, I don't care who you are. Yeah, like, no, it's I don't. I can't say I can relate. Agree. <laughs> like, I'm agree with you. you know how when women do that, it's like, no, nah, I can't say I do. I can't say that I do, bro.
Back in <laughs> Texas. <laughs> And he got the mess. So what the fuck is wrong? You don't understand who I party with? I party with kings and queens. What the fuck is wrong? Yo, get your shit. He grabs their shit, you know, and throws it out of the room, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Ooh. Now I'm thinking to myself, we're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> we are headed to the who yeah. Do you know they picked their shit up and said, oh, my God, Puffy, where have you been? We've been looking for you. Just like that. Wow. Understand this. Yes. The Listen, myth. and I'm not going to say what happened after that because, you know, we live in our lives now. But he was so hot that at that time he told the, and when I say the baddest ones of this city, to get out of here. And I watched Puff maneuver. I saw Puff when he would walk into a club when it was the 94, 94 Biggie run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I ain't seen nothing. So when I say hot, when you say miss, and here's the, here's the, here's the end of the story about the miss. The minute, now that was like 98, 97. 2005 when Ray Charles was out, lady walks up to me that you all know. She says, oh, my God, look at you. You're gorgeous. <laughs> I still got these same motherfucking teeth <laughs> that I had from 97. <laughs> So I play that to say, again, I don't want to accuse Jamie Foxx of anything um, inflammatory. And I, I also want to not defend somebody. I don't know Jamie Foxx. Like you said, let's like de-illusion de 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 ourselves and demystify ourselves of these celebrities. But he is describing a story of what he's saying was a consensual sexual experience that turned south. Yeah. But then he describes the man that comes in as the P. Diddy that's in, in prison. Basically, he, de he basically described him in full character of what we're hearing in these indictments. He comes in, a gold chain on, no shirt, in the middle of a freak-off. Yeah. Women are not acting and doing what he's telling him them or expecting them to do at his freak-off. And it's like, what are you, you're accusing somebody at my party of sexual assault, whether it's valid or not. His response at his party is, there's somebody saying something foul happened, and you go, what? Get the fuck out of here. Grabbing their shit, yelling at them, throwing their shit, which is no way to handle, like, if you're, if, if they're at your house, it's your responsibility yeah. And, you know, your response to a uh, sexual assault allegation was to <laughs> take this out of the man immediately and then, like, assault the women's belongings. This is Jamie Foxx at a party, and this is the party he's describing. That yeah. was, like, that was over 20 years ago. Yeah. You know? So just think about that. Like, we're saying he was doing this shit last year, and he was doing this shit in 98 parties, everybody's freaking, and the floor slippery, and all this shit. This shit was happening in 98. Man. Having freak offs for 20 plus years? Whew. You learn all the tricks of the trade, the IVs and shit. You know how tired you gotta be to get an IV injection? Yeah. To get fluids? This is a freak bull. Y'all dehydrated. Y'all doing too much freak bull this stuff. This is like, this is too freaky. Any IVs. This, is, this is too freaky. Alright, so I think this is a good point to stop, reflect, breathe, decompress from a freaky odyssey. There are many more chapters of the life and crimes of Diddy that we have to go through. We've barely scratched the surface, but it's not good. Though there are points in this story that we're going to have to have a chuckle because it's just so ridiculous and unbelievable. This is a very serious situation. I believe that the music and entertainment industry is very infected with people with similar habits and beliefs and methods as Sean Combs. And I think in time, not much time, we will learn a lot more. I think the rabbit hole of freak offs goes pretty fucking deep. See you guys for part two. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We're gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You're gonna hear about my party. They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we wanna have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's horizon, people get intimidated. There's a lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it. It ain't nothing but, but, but break it down racial barriers, break it down generation barriers. People from all walks of life. Ron Perlman talking to Jay-Z, Jay-Z talking to, you know what I'm saying? It just goes on and on, you know, it's just, it's just like people from all walks of life connecting and getting together.